Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today I'm going to talk about the Florida Project. How kids usually view the world when they're under the age of seven, around six or seven, isn't usually viewing the world in that their parents are good or bad, or the socioeconomical climate that they live in, or anything like that. It's about the friends they have, the good times they have in the now, that their parents are their parents and they love them to a certain regard. Just the joy of being a kid and knowing you can always go on that joy and have fun adventures. And the Florida Project has that view going on all throughout it in a way that feels beautiful and wonderful and joyous and more reminding you of what it was really like being a kid more than any kids film could ever achieve. That might be why this is like, I think it's a kids film that's rated R. Is this rated R? Anyway, but it really gets to the heart of being a kid and what matters to a kid. Certainly, I think a lot of people when they talk about this film, talk about the socioeconomical ideas within it and how the director Sean Baker who previously directed Tangerine and has directed other films that I need to see is really um, going into the areas of America that often don't get talked about and that's usually the poor and the forgotten and the Florida Project gets into that but in some ways it does but it doesn't bring it up in the way that I think maybe Tangerine does or presumably his other movies or a movie that would really be pronouncing it. In this way, I don't think the main girl, Mooney, it's really something that bothers her as much as she's accepted this is her life and the acceptance of that when you're a kid, whether you grow up in a suburbia or a city or a farm, you just accept that that's life and you're okay with it. You're joyous about it. It's when you're older that you start questioning, you know, the things that happened when you were that age or your parents or the ideas of such and I think the Florida Project goes into that so amazingly it's just such a joyous film to see but it does so matter-of-factly you're almost kind of just confronted with just a bunch of kids just playing and that's a lot of fun to see there's a real sense of play to this certainly because there isn't really a structure I would say I mean there is it definitely like goes chronologically it's kind of like about a girl Mooney during her summer break and her mother who uh, live in this hotel where they basically like just a lot of kind of people who don't have permanent residence but just rent this motel like day by day as much as they can stay there and her and her mom basically live there but don't officially and are kind of ruled over by the manager Bobby played by Willem Dafoe who's kind of a de facto kind of guardian of the motel which is called the Magic Castle Motel and it kind of just takes place over her summer break and hanging out with her friends and you know getting into mischief and things like that and it does have that sense of play because you never are exactly sure where the film's going to go, what it's going to tell you in one scene, and what it's not going to tell you, what it's going to confront you with. How, um, And a lot of times this can feel like a really fun kids movie, and other times it can really hit you with some just real raw emotions that are almost like too hard to take. It might be because you are through that view of a child, and sometimes when you're a child and you're hit with some of these like really strong moments, it is too hard to take. And it's probably one of the few times I've seen a film where the emotion just was so overbearing I was like honestly a little shocked by it and the Florida Project manages to do that in a way that feels almost more foreign it's almost like the little fugitive meets my neighbor the Yamadas meets Amacord or something like it's very American I mean it's like super American it takes place in Kissimmee Florida as much as you might hear me say a bunch of those films and maybe you've seen some of those films little fugitive is actually American but still feels very relatable and American it has a real humanity to it It's not kind of like this stuffier, weird art movie as much as it does that kind of a structure. And I think Sean Baker is excellent at that, especially like this kind of irony undercurrent that this takes place in the shadow of Disneyland or Disney World. I'm not sure which one's in Florida, but one one of them, you just kind of get hints at it throughout the film. Like there's a sign for like Seven Dwarf Lane. I've never been to a Disney park, so I don't really know, but it's clearly there around it. And it's kind of like, you know, the evil that should not speak its name for the most part. It kind of plays this undercurrent of the, like, you know, they're in the shadow of American society, much as they are in the shadow of Disneyland because, or Disney World or whatever. Whatever. This Disney park, the shadow of that this thing 
represents the kind of American dream and the American dream of a vacation and the idea that this is the ideal vacation that any American or, you know, pretty much anyone around the world would love to go on and see Mickey Mouse and Donald and Goofy and everything like that. Whereas these kids are living in a crappy homeless motel and aren't exactly sure what their future is going to be. It brings up a whole bunch of levels about the capitalist system and America in general and what happens to the people that are forgotten right under our noses. And you can almost read this film as just, you know, a joyous kids film, uh, a joyous experience of these children and not really be thinking as much about that, but that's certainly in there. It's kind of interesting because you could almost view this as a lighter film, but it's also a lot more denser of a film when really going into it. I didn't think about the Disney part while I was watching it. In fact, you might leave and be like, maybe people made too much of a big deal out of that. But then, you know, later when you're thinking about it, you're like, oh shit, I think that was like important. And I think Sean Baker has really become, between this and Tangerine, someone who really believes in showing people and understanding character in ways that only true, like real amazing filmmakers can really do. When I think of a film like Tangerine, I think of the characters in that. And the same thing with the Florida Project, particularly Haley, Mooney's mom, and Mooney, and even Mooney's friends like Jancy and Scooty and, and Bobby, especially played by Willem Dafoe. I love the portrayal of Haley as the mother because that that's one thing that I almost got mad at other people's reviews about it because I felt that even though she is, and this isn't because I'm a parent, I think parents are infallible. I think anyone who thinks that has clearly other weirder issues, but that Haley in it and a lot of it we're seeing her through Mooney's eyes so despite the fact that she's doing some things that are clearly not okay and not a great environment for a child to grow up in and there are lots of times I thought what is Haley's like or her can her parents watch Mooney does she have a sister or an aunt or like something to a certain regard but it didn't feel that she really did unfortunately but you kind of view her as her mom and she loves her mom and she loves helping her mom sell wholesale perfume in a country club's parking lot and things like that and so you as a viewer and since it's shown so matter of factly I don't think I really hated her as much you know I certainly don't think she's the greatest person in the world but I think since you're seeing her through those eyes you see how much she does love Mooney at least and she clearly has some other issues and needs to grow up quite a bit but I, I almost like want to defend her in a little way. I don't know, maybe that's something about me personally. But I loved uh, the performance by Bria Venati, I think, uh, who's like an Instagram person. And then uh, Brooklyn Prince, who plays Mooney, who's just absolutely amazing. Has that kind of like natural kid acting that I thought was gone and buried because like Disney Channel erased it somehow. But she's so natural, it's amazing. I mean, she's pretty much like a six-year-old kid, and she is so acting but I do actually think she's an amazing amazing performance and just like she just makes this film so watchable and you want to go on these journeys with these kids specifically Mooney and Willem Dafoe Willem Dafoe is one of those actors that it, he's so good that it's obvious so it's like almost like I don't want to get into it because to me it's like you know why is the sky blue Willem Dafoe is a great actor and I think in this he kind of plays his great warm supporting role type of thing but he's damn good at it and Willem Dafoe is really good at showing some warmth in like a smaller independent film it was almost like perfectly made for him I think he kind of gets into the fact that he's the more established actor in it he plays it absolutely perfectly I thought he was really great in this film and I love like the cast of characters from the lady who just decides to bathe topless in the middle of the day to like all the various people throughout the motel and you almost get a sense that this motel has like people care way more about it than they really should you know just like someone at a crappy job or something like that you'll notice these people who really mean something to them the character of Bobby who Willem Dafoe plays is really one who loves this area and loves this motel he certainly won't say it and as much pride as maybe someone who you know likes something that you could maybe more naturally have pride in but I still think he really cares about it I think a lot of the residents really care about that it's mainly their home for the most part sadly and I like how this film can say all these things but also be this light nice film I would recommend this to people who you know don't really want to see a darker weirder arty independent film because I think for the most part you're going to be seeing a film that has this light beautiful energy to it but then when it strikes you it's going to strike you so hard it's almost unbelievable and I find that probably one of the more remarkable things the confidence Sean Baker has as a filmmaker and how well crafted a script like this was and particularly a film by Sean Baker that doesn't feel as well plotted out it just feels like you're going from story to story and you know I think the flow of it works amazingly well Sean Baker is so good at that I also noticed he had a lot of Greg the Bunny references which he 
was uh, a creator on that long obscure show but I, I appreciated that I noticed it early on and I was like it's probably not I'm probably making too much out of this and then like they showed a shot of the screen it was like clearly Greg the Bunny I was like okay well clearly you are doing that now which now I would like to see his movies and rewatch Greg the Bunny because I did actually watch that a little bit I don't remember it at all though I remember this probably a lot more but this really launches Sean Baker as being like wow he is a filmmaker I want to go through his filmography I am incredibly interested in him and I'm interested in what he has said and I just love how he does these kind of smaller films and he doesn't get in the whole like rip off of Marty the Ernest Borgnine film kind of thing that usually happens with these smaller films he kind of finds life in them and finds life that works naturally for the characters and finds life in a way that I think most independent films pretend they do have but Sean Baker has so much that this is one of the real great movies I've seen this year. I was just really taken aback by it. And I love when a film can do something and you almost don't notice it. But then when you leave, you're like, whoa. And I think with the Florida Project, I often felt like that. I felt shocked at how good this was. I love Tangerine quite a bit. And I think this kind of like an even bigger peak that you didn't think, you know, you thought Tangerine was this big statement. Florida Project is more so. I really love that about this movie. I love seeing the world through a six-year-old's eyes and understanding what's important to them and what matters to them and seeing how people celebrating because they could buy a bunch of stuff at the dollar store and not in like a shitty ironic way that most of the time you know when you're doing those things you're almost making fun of them because haha they're so poor but in a way that like through a kid who doesn't know any better this is actually really cool and fun and I do think when he hits you with kind of like that independent film realness it actually like strikes you because I mean like I said before when you see those things through a child's eyes it is striking and real and to capture that emotion in a film I think says a lot about Sean Baker as a director that he is able to do that that's not an easy thing to do to make you feel that kind of raw emotion in a way that scary bit of emotion there's a couple parts towards the end that it gets a little more real and I don't think you could ever be prepared for it but there's kind of a gloriousness in that the Florida Project is probably going to go down with you know things like The Little Fugitive and the great films about children or 400 Blows which was very influenced by The Little Fugitive and rightfully so because it has that spirit in it. it has that spirit of a child that you can never package in a way and this film doesn't feel packaged it feels improvisational and scripted which apparently there was a script but they kind of they would shoot things because they got ideas or because they could and you can feel that throughout this film it doesn't feel as tied down and hampered down in terms of most more plotted films that we're used to and most of the films I even talk about are more plotted and structured out. This film feels more of a looser fun kids play adventure but also kind of someone who knew how to wield that to make the story of their film. I think Sean Baker is a director who we're definitely going to be talking about and someone who I would like to reading reviews of this and reading more and more about him the more and more I'm interested in him and I think The Florida Project is one of those kind of films that cannot really be completely tamed despite the fact that Sean Baker has controlled it and made it work in such a way that he's a very precise smarter filmmaker than this film highlights in its flow and its interesting structure he's the kind of director who knows what he's doing with those things and can kind of wield it to say all sorts of wonderful glamorous things and put you through quite an experience as an audience member the Florida project is that small beautiful little movie that you couldn't believe actually got away with and did everything it did and it was just such a glorious thing to watch to just sit there and watch the story of these kids in a shitty motel in Florida to see all the joy and love that was brought through telling that story and give you this kind of rich amazing experience that makes you both believe in the power of movies and the depressing realness of being poor the Florida project is kind of that unique beautiful wonderful movie that people often talk about hey my favorite movie is this sweet little thing and you almost want to disregard it but the Florida Florida Project has that sweetness and that realness and all these deep and rich ideas within it and is able to do it in an incredibly joyous and entertaining way, which definitely makes it all that more unique for it by using its real undermineness to kind of say something more than maybe you'd realize while you're laughing and having fun with a bunch of kids is really an incredible thing that Sean Baker got away with. So if you have seen The Florida Project and you would like to talk about it, then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to.